with us, uh, very generous of your president, President Dori, to say so, so much wonderful things about me. As, as he said, no, let me first give our, our chair, Ms. Ibarra, and our honorary chair, Alan Rojas, a friend of mine. Margie Co, the alumni president. Members of the board of trustees, teams. Ms. Co, uh, I'm sorry, but all of them are there, sitting, sitting downstairs. Parents and uh, fellow students. I got to know Dali Pua when, of, when she was a young, professor at the UP, and I was a new president of the UP. That's not yet 100 years ago. <laughs> and uh, so we went, we were the first, I think, delegation with a very high government officials included, invited officially by the Chinese government, because at that time, 1982, Filipinos were still prohibited from going into China. But we got officially invited and we visited different universities all over. And uh, I deliberately asked that I go to, uh, to visit the Chinese Overseas University in Fujian. Because uh, even then, we have some Filipino, Chinese Filipinos who told me that there are Filipino students in Fujian. And I said to Dori, let's go and visit it. And it was very fortunate because Fujian was the, the province where many of our Chinese Filipinos come from. And uh, so there were 23 Chinese Filipinos studying then. At, at the overseas Filipino, the overseas uh, Chinese Philippine, uh, Chinese University. I think they changed the name now. Uh, so we went to Beijing, to Xi'an, uh, to Shanghai, and then finally to Guangdong, where we had our final dinner. I brought along my my eleven, no, I think he was ten year old son because he was studying in Xavier, and he knows a little about Mandarin. So I, I said, no, it's a good exposure to my son. And, our, and, a, and at our final dinner, I asked Dori, I think she has forgotten it, I asked her, oh, please coach Sunny to speak in Mandarin, not in English, speak in Mandarin for our farewell for our goodbye uh, address to our host. And Sunny did. And he said it very fluently, as if he was a native speaker. And you know, our guests just applauded and stood up and grabbed Sunny and hugged him, because they were so delighted to hear that a 10-year-old boy can speak Mandarin. And that boy is now a senator, Senator Sani Angara. So that's the, uh, my first encounter. And since then, the pleasant acquaintance with uh, and friendship with Dory uh, Poe. And so I'm very delighted. I'm extremely delighted to join you this morning and greet the class of uh, 2016. of the School of Graduate Studies, Education, Information Technology. Accounting and uh, HRN. Well, this is almost uh, uh, commonplace, but I think this ceremony is a milestone for you. And if I may say so. You are 
graduating, so you are being graduated from an outstanding institution. I didn't, I didn't realize it until I read up about your history, that you really shape and sharpen some of the best entrepreneurs and philanthropists in this country. Lucian, Henry C. Carlos Chan, Tony Carchon, George T., my personal friend. All of them I know. And so I was very happy. And the Rojas brothers, Alan. Alan, who is still single, a bachelor, can build you another building taller than this and donate it to the school. You know, that, that we not put you in a corner, Alan. So, so this, you should be proud, and I'm sure many of you are proud, and the parents basically are proud, that you are graduating from, from an outstanding institution that has produced Chinese Filipino entrepreneurs and philanthropists. And one common virtue among all them is philanthropy. And I think that sprang more. You know, if you read about philanthropy, Asians are not very well known for, for generous generosity and philanthropy. The West are better known, you know, the Rockefellers, the Ford, the Carnegies, and all that. It's only lately in the 20th century that Asians begin to give, to give back to society. In fact, when we were in, in, uh, in China, they said that the biggest donor of the university buildings is a philanthropist from Singapore. From Singapore. And that was me. Well, later part of the 20th century. And since then, Asians, but especially of Chinese parentage and origin, have become well-known philanthropists. From Hong Kong, from Singapore, from Malaysia, some from, Sing from Indonesia, and from the Philippines. Although the scale and volume of Philippine philanthropy is still relatively small compared to the Singaporeans, the Malaysian, and the Hong Kong, and the Indonesian, and even the, the Chinese in Taiwan and in the mainland. But it's growing, and I think that's part of the Confucian virtue to give back what you have, what you have received. And I'm sure many of you will become Taipans in just a matter of, of, of time, I guess. And uh, as you, the Dean of Education said, you know, early on you inculcate the value of uh, honesty, of generosity, incorruptibility in your in your students. But let me let me repeat because I keep saying this everywhere I go. That those who are those of you who are entering the labor market, who are born in this generation, are quite lucky. Number one, because you are growing up in the Philippines, not very prosperous, but less poor than during our time. There's more, uh, more families having more spending uh, money nowadays in the Philippines, although there's still a lot of very poor people. But the gap is closing in, and I hope that you, your generation, will close. You are, you are not just competing among us Filipinos. 
among Ilocanos, Ilongos, Cebuanos, Tuwarais, Tagalog. You are going to compete with Malaysians, Singaporeans, Indonesians, Vietnamese, because we now belong to one market, the ASEAN market, because we are now integrated into one economic unit. And, the, and goods and services and labor and professions can move across borders without restrictions. That's how the field has opened up for you, which was not available to us during our time and in the subsequent generations that followed us. So you are fortunate, depending on you, you are fortunate that there's so much opportunity open to you in the ASEAN community. Secondly, you are lucky to be born in a century where your fellows are so young. The average Filipino age now is 26, whereas all around us, from Japan to Korea to Taiwan to Singapore to China, are all aging. The, the so-called aging societies. I'm sure you understand the implication of a young, young uh, population, young nation. Your potential for earning will be high. Your potential for putting aside or savings will be high. Why, why is your income potentially high? Because you will be more productive. And why are you more productive? Because you, uh, you are learning more, much more than the previous generation. And you know, you don't have to go to the library and open up that thick volume. In. You can do it from your own cell phone or iPad, you want. Right in your bedroom, like the research can you cannot wait to go to the library, stay there as a lawyer, stay there up to midnight, and pull those thick volumes and read our assignments. No, we don't have to do that. The young lawyers don't have to do that. They can access it, they can Google it. So imagine the advantages, the flow of learning, the flow of communication and information, and the amount of learning you absorb because you are young and living in this era. And that is the digital era. The, the, we are 100 million Filipinos now. And the penetration of cell phones is almost 90% one of the highest in the world. At saka yung SMS nga, di ba? Messaging. Number one tayo. Including hacking yata. Hindi kayo mga IP graduates. But seriously, so you are, you are, you should, you are fortunate, you are blessed being born in this century, in this digital age, when Filipinos are young and the potential for productivity, for increased incomes, for savings, for many new kinds of work are often to We didn't enjoy that kind of opportunity during that time. And, and therefore, <clears throat> I, I, I like to leave uh, This, this message to you. What does the 21st century require or need? Of course, we need good leaders. And in 10 days' time, we could choose our number one leader, and number two, and 24 senators, and all the congressmen, and all the mayors, etc. But the most important to me is the number one, the leader, because the leader always makes a difference. And therefore, if the leader 
is uh, not literate or not numerate or not even aware of technology, we might be left behind. But more than being numerate and literate can read and write and understand uh, SMS and emailing and that we need other skills, especially you. You need more than being literate and, and numerate. You need to master communication. And I'm very happy that you are not only bilingual, you're multilingual in school. You learn Mandarin, you learn, of course, English and Filipino, but you also learn Mandarin and Okinese. That's the rare virtue in this multilingual, interconnected world. So communication is very important to survive in this, in this global competition. It's also necessary to learn how to help each other, how to cooperate, how to collaborate. Because standing by oneself, I think will, you'll be successful because you may have connection and talent, but you will not be as successful if you if you yeah, if you are just working by yourself and by your lonesome self, rather than cooperating and collaborating with others. They call it now networking. You better learn how to network. Because through networking, then you get the talent, technology, intelligence, information from all from the network. The third C, the third C as in cat, is critical thinking. You must not only be able to read and write, you must be able to collect all those pieces of information that you have read and put it into a hole. You don't accept it as as even as difficult as gospel truth. Critical thinking is very important. And the fourth C is creativity. Fortunately, Filipinos are so creative. We're one of the most creative peoples on earth. The, the graphic artists of Hollywood or Japan mostly are Filipinos. The architects and designers of buildings in Dubai, in the, mid in the middle is those working in Hong Kong and, and, Hong and uh, Singapore, they're all Filipino architects and designers. So we, I think we are born to arts, to music, to artistry, and that's already an advantage to all of us. We are the creative people. And that's why services in this country will be, will be uh, will outpace all the other sectors of work, this, uh, the modern services. So don't forget about that four C. Communication, collaboration, critical thinking, and creativity. And as a final message or a reminder, because this is not something new, but it has been a proven virtue. If talent alone is not a surefire formula for success. You may be so talented, but if you are not industrious, value will not be talent. Uh, Pedigree, that you're the son of this and that, very famous, is also not a guarantee for success. Because how many sons and daughters of prominent people, very successful people, are not successful, are not equally successful? If you have talent, and you have good connections and pedigree, but above all, you have passion and dedication, what some people call work ethic, 
then you will surely be successful. Modern psychologists call it greed, G-R-I-T, greed. Greed means you don't give up, you persevere, you're patient, and you look to the long term, not tomorrow, not instant gratification. You keep on working and working until you reach your goal, and surely you will succeed in achieving your ambition because you are great. Diba? But itong mga millennials ngayon eh, very short attention span. Diba? They keep moving from one job to another. They keep uh, changing boyfriends and girlfriends. The last is, you must have, you must have passion and perseverance and look behind tomorrow. Because the payoff is much, the reward is much greater at the end of, of the road. And that's what psychologists call greed. That's what my parents call work ethic. Can I see Work ethic. So, yan, you want to say your advice. Be passionate. Be, per be persevering, be patient. Success will not be achieved overnight. Neither talent in itself, while very important, will ensure your success, nor the name, your family name, or your pedigree or connection. All of, all of them are necessary ingredients, but it must always be coupled with dedication and passion, love of your work, and a goal that you want to achieve, and you don't, you don't get distracted until you achieve that goal. I'm sure all of you, all of you, well, maybe some will not, but I think the majority of you will succeed because of the kind of training and the kind of, uh, of uh, of values that your institution is inculcating in you early on. You are taught in several languages that makes you already a future global citizen. You are taught in the virtues that make typically the Taipans and the and the philanthropies I mentioned earlier. So I'm positive that you will also succeed in your time. And as a final request, please stand up and applaud and give and honor your parents for their persistence.